Hey everyone, first of all, really sorry. There was some technical glitch, but it's all sorted now and we are back. So, if now you can hear me properly, if you can see me properly, give me quick, quick thumbs up. So that if there is an if there is any other glitch, we can sort it right now itself. Yes? Can I have the new chat over here, please? So that I can see who all have joined again. Can I see the new chat over here? We can just refresh the chat. All right. Yes, of course. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to Baiju's class 8, 9 and 10. I hope you all are here. Yes. Just give me a minute so that, you know, we can refresh the chat also. And then I'll be able to see who all are here. All right. Chalo, fata fat se. Can I have the new chat, please? Yes, because I'm eagerly waiting to start the session with you people. Can I have the new chat? Though I hope all of you are here, okay? It'll take maybe a minute or so and then I'll be able to read all your comments. Meanwhile, we can ask our friends also to join, yes? Alright, so if you can see me, if you can hear me, give me thumbs up, give me a smiley face, write okay, yes? Let's see who all are here. Okay, Bhavya is giving me loads of thumbs up of all the colors. Great! I can see Mohammad Anzar is back. Anshita is here. Pratyush is here. Gungun is here. All right. So, what's the agenda for today? In today's class, what are we going to do? We will explore some terms which are related to an atom. Right. Now, there are various terms related to an atom and if you really want to master chemistry, if you really want to do well in chemistry, you should be able to understand these terms, you should know these terms thoroughly, yes? Alright, and that's what exactly we're going to cover today. Bohat sare thumbs up mil gaye, thank you so much. I know the setup is working absolutely fine now and really sorry for the delay. But without further delay, ab jaldi se session start karte hain. By revising what we've already learned, right? So, Bohabari scheme hum kar chuke hain and it says that the maximum number of electrons in a given shell is given by this formula that is 2n square, right? Now, what is n? n is the shell number. So, if the, we are talking about k shell, n is equal to 1. So, 2 into 1 square gives you 2. Similarly, for l shell, n is equal to 2. So, 2 into 2 square that is 2 into 4 gives you 8. For M, you will get 18 electrons. For N, you will get 32 electrons. Yes? Alright. Yeah, easy peasy. Really simple. But hey, we need to remember this as well. Maximum number of electrons that can be put in a particular shell. If it's the outermost shell, that is going to be 8. Okay. This is a very important point. So, I'll put a star over here. Also, electrons are not accommodated in a given shell unless inner shells are filled first. So, suppose... Imagine a canteen scenario, right? And K, L, M, they are standing in a queue. So obviously, whatever K's order is will be taken first, isn't it? So suppose K wants to order two pizzas. So that order will be taken first. L wants to order eight pizzas. That order will be taken later. M wants to order 18. That's how we go about, right? First customer ko sabse pehle. First come, first serve, right? That happens in case of shells as well. So, first shell to be filled is going to be K shell, then L, then M. So, inner shells are filled first. Absolutely. Alright. Now, there's a new term that we see over here that is electronic configuration. And I'm going to write this as EC. Okay. So, whenever I write EC, you would know that I'm talking about electronic configuration. What does this actually mean? It's basically the distribution of electrons in various shells. So, suppose you've got hydrogen over here. 
How many electrons are there? There is one electron when we talk about hydrogen. So we can safely put this one electron in the K shell. That's going to be its electronic configuration. Next, we've got helium. For helium, there are two electrons. There you go. We've placed these two electrons in the K shell, as you can see over here. Sort it till here. Right? Alright. But what happens when you need to put a third electron? Anybody? If you know the answer, post in the comment section. What's going to happen if you want to place the third electron? Can this be put in the K shell? No, 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 L shell. And you people are absolutely right. So, since K shell can accommodate a maximum of two electrons only, that means the next electron, that is your third electron, is going to go in the L shell. Shlok, Prakhar, Anshita, Neba, you all are right. Yes, Supriya. Ekdam correct. So, are K ko dohi pizza chahiye. Why would you want to give the third pizza? Force karke kyu dena, right? L ko de dete hai. So, lithium which has three electrons. So, two in the first shell. And one in the L shell, as you can see over here. Okay, next, what do we have? We've got beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. And you're going to place the next electrons in the L shell one by one. So, we are sorted till 10 electrons. Yes? If it's sorted till here, give me a quick thumbs up in the comment section. And I'll understand. Yes, there's going to be a menti quiz. Don't worry, there is a menti quiz. I know you people love menti quiz. We won't end the session before that. Without that. Alright, we won't. Okay. Now, for 11 electrons, that is the case of sodium, two situations are being given to you over here. Yes, in the first one, you see 2,9 as your electronic configuration. So, we see two electrons in the K shell and we see nine electrons in the L shell. In the second case, what is the electronic configuration? It's 2, 8, 1. Both the cases, 11 electrons are being placed. Which one is right? The first one or the second one? Varshini, music full on. All of you are saying that the second one is right. The first one is wrong. That is absolutely correct. So, the first one is indeed wrong. Why? Because L shell can at the most have 8 electrons, right? So, 9th electron ko yahaan se hata dete hain aur isko kaha le jate hain? M shell mein le jate hain. Okay, so the correct configuration is going to be 2, 8, 1. Bilkul sahi pehel. Yes, Vaishnavi. Fida, Lakshmi, all of you are right. So, based on this, in a table, in a tabular form, we've given you all the elements out there. Okay. Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, aapko sabke de humne, as you can see over here. Then, look at this potassium and calcium towards the end. Why is it not 2, 8, 9 in case of potassium? Well, the M shell can, you know, adjust, it can accommodate 18 electrons. Then why are we not putting the ninth electron here? Anyone? Let's see who's going to answer this one. Similarly for calcium also, why is it not 2, 8, 10? Let's see who's actually understood Bohabari's rule. Absolutely right. Because of the octet rule. So, the last shell, the outermost shell can accommodate at the most 8 electrons only. Yes, Nibha, you're absolutely right. And that's why this is wrong and these two are correct. Maximum electrons in last shell, in valid shell can be 8. Bilkul sahi. So you people have revised and well done. Now, what exactly is octet rule? I saw somebody write about octet rule. Basically, an atom tries to have 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Except if it is the K shell. In K shell, we are talking about 2 electrons. For K, it's duplet. Otherwise, it's going to be octet. As you can see for rest of the cases. Here and here. We've got 8 electrons in the outermost shell. Now, why do we need a fully filled outer shell? We need a fully filled outer shell because that is how an atom is stable. 
एब्सोल्युटली अरे हमें भी लाइफ में स्टेबिलिटी चाहिए इजंट इट सो एटम्स को भी स्टेबिलिटी चाहिए वॉट आर वी वी आर मेड ऑफ एटम्स ओनली राइट एवरी वन इज सीकिंग द सेम थिंग एवरीबडी वॉन्ट्स टू बी स्टेबल सो लुक एट क्लोजली आन दीज नोवल गैसेस Yes, they are. We've got helium, neon, argon. So, two electrons are here. This is two comma eight, and this is two comma eight comma eight. Yes. Now look at them. They have completely filled out a shell. That means they have little chemical reactivity because they're already stable, and that's the reason they do not combine with other elements. because of complete outermost valence shell yes shri ram absolutely right now i've been talking about combining a lot right there's a term related to it combining capacity ki jab hum baat karte hain that is nothing but valency and you're going to hear this term a lot so there are two terms one is valency and one is valence electron when we talk about valence electron basically we are talking about electrons which are present in the outermost shell in the last shell that is your valence electron valency is your combining capacity so let's understand valency by taking some examples okay with the help of some examples now valency basically is the number of electrons gained lost or shared to have an octet except for the k shell for k shell it's going to be two electrons now in case of noble gases they have completely filled out a shell that means they have no tendency to combine combining capacity or valency as we've learned right now is going to be zero in case of noble gases now if the question comes ki noble gases ki valency zero kyu hai you should be able to answer yes because of completely filled outermost shell all right now how do elements actually attain stability so when we talk about elements and when we talk about stability i'll quickly give you an example suppose you're having your favorite dish okay but now you've overeaten that so of course you will be sad and what do you what will you want you would probably want to go go for a walk or something to digest the food or maybe you did not get enough of it then also you will be sad what will you do in this case you will want to eat more so maybe you're trying to eat more or maybe you're trying to digest whichever way you are ultimately trying to be happy and that's what elements are also wanting they are ultimately wanting to be stable maybe by losing gaining by whichever means okay they just want to attain octet of electrons by gaining or losing or sharing and attain that noble gas configuration yes aviral nebhal gemini all of you are right by losing gaining or sharing now let's understand valency in case of hydrogen lithium and sodium okay look at all of these now this is 1 this is 2 comma 1 this is 2 comma 8 comma 1 can i write the electronic configuration like this yes write a yes if you've understood how i've written the electronic configuration and please note over here In all these cases, what is common? One electron in the outermost shell. That's common, right? So it's very easy to lose one electron. So the moment this outermost one electron is lost, then it's going to be stable. It's going to complete its octet, isn't it? And that's why in this case, valency is equal to number of valence electrons. So you've got one valence electron, and valency is also one. All right. let's move on so combining capacity is going to be 1 in this case moving on to the next one we've got fluorine now when we talk about fluorine it is 2,7 yes how many valence electrons there are seven valence electrons now in case of seven valence electrons two options are there first is that fluorine can lose these seven electrons or maybe it just gains one more and you know fluorine ko hard work ka man nahi hai smart work ka man hai to kya karega fluorine fluorine is going to gain one electron because that's easier right so again in this case valency is going to be one and how is this one 
because it's gaining one electron to complete the octet. Now note over here, in a way, can I say valency is 8 minus the number of valence electrons? So it is 8 minus 7, that is 1. So, we can generalize this that in case we've got, suppose, less than 4 valence electrons, in that case, valency will be equal to number of valence electrons. Valency will be equal to number of valence electrons in case it is less than 4. If number of valence electron is equal to 4, valency will be 4. And if the number of valence electron is more than 4, in that case, what are we going to do? 8 minus the number of valence electron. Now keep this in mind because a lot of questions are going to be based on this. Bilkul safe kar lo ye. Yes? Alright. So, say suppose the valence electrons are 6. Quickly tell me what's going to be the valency. Number of valence electron I'm giving you as 6. So, what is going to be the valency? Apply this rule. Basic, simple, sir. Easy rule. All right. Fida, Ayush, Nibha, Laksha, Shiksha, Prakar, everybody is saying it is 2. And you are absolutely right. Why? Because it's easy to gain 2 electrons rather than losing 6. Isn't it? All right. So, there you go. We've tabulated valency for you in a table form. You can see the shells, you can see the symbols here, name of the element and their respective valency. Please note for helium and for neon, it is zero. That means they are very much stable already, right? And that's why they are not trying to combine. They are noble gases. Yes? All right. For the rest of them, if the valence electrons are less than 4, it's going to be equal to the valence electron, right? If it is equal to 4, valency will also be 4. And in case the valence electrons are more than 4 over here, as you can see, then it's going to be 8 minus the number of valence electron. Alright, similarly, we you can calculate for any element. Now, look at this model of an atom. We've already done this, right? We know electrons are revolving. We can see protons are there in the nucleus with a positive charge. We can see neutrons are also there. So these yellow spheres are, are the neutrons. Let's focus on protons and neutrons. First, we'll focus on protons. Now, this number of proton is a very important number. Why is it important? Because I'm just going to introduce a new term that is atomic number. So atomic number is nothing but the number of protons of an atom. So this is the significance of atomic number. Yes? Alright. So if I let you know what are the number of protons in an atom, can you tell me the atomic number now? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Great. Now, this atomic number is being denoted by the letter Z. Noted? Alright. Now, again look here. Again, let's look at the model of an atom. This time, we are going to focus on both protons and neutrons. There you go. Protons and neutrons. Together, they are known as nucleons. Okay. They make a team over here. And this team ka naam kya hai? Nucleons. Now, this number is again very important because again a new term is coming up which is mass number. So what is mass number? Number of protons plus number of neutrons. Why are we not including electrons here? Why are we not including electrons? Is team electrons kyo nahi Let's see. We've discussed this in the last class so I assume you would know this. Steam electrons Q nahi hai. Let's see who can answer this quickly. I know you all know the answer. Okay, somebody is asking why for phosphorus valency is 3, 5, both. Okay, so in case of phosphorus, you see that, you know, valency is given to be 3 also, it's given to be 5 also. So you're going to study about orbitals in class 11th and then you'll be able to understand this. Why is this happening over here? All right. Papia says because electron ka mass negligible hai. Supriya is also saying electron has negligible mass. Yes, you people are right. And that's why mass number 
is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons. Now, this is being denoted by letter A. Easy to remember. A is the first letter, Z is the last letter, right? So, quite easy. Yes, I can see all of you have written that electron mass is negligible. Awesome, guys, you remember. Alright, now, in case of helium, you've got two electrons which are revolving. You've got two protons, you've got two neutrons. So, since the number of protons is 2, that means these red ones, the red spheres. So, what is the atomic number? Atomic number is going to be 2. You can go back and check from the table as well that the atomic number for helium is 2. What about the mass number? For mass number, what do we do? We add the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So, it's going to be 2 plus 2. Like this. This is the focus area now. And... Mass is going to be 4. Unanimous answer is coming. All of you are writing 4, 4, 4, 4 and that's awesome. Alright, how do we represent an element? For the representation of an element, this is how you are going to present. So, there you go. X is the symbol. Z is the atomic number. A is the mass number. So, obviously A comes first. This is how you can remember. A pehle aata hai Z se. So, A upar hoga. Z will be over here. For example, look at carbon. 6 is the atomic number, that is the number of protons, that is the significance of atomic number. And 12 is the mass number, that is number of protons plus number of neutrons. So there you go. In this table you can see number of protons, neutrons, atomic number, mass number of first 20 elements. I'll move on to the next slide, then you can see the rest of the elements which are not shown over here. Now, what I want you to note over here is any, any information can be missing. Okay, for example, say in case of boron, they might not give you this value, but the table is there. Number of neutrons you don't know, but you can see that the mass number is 11. So, it's going to be 11 minus 5, that is going to be 6, isn't it? So, you should know how to read this table. You should know that atomic number is nothing but the number of protons and mass number is nothing but the number of protons plus number of neutrons based on that if any number is missing you can easily figure that out similarly you've got rest of the elements over here say suppose for example in case of um, which example should we take okay in case of potassium they have not given you the atomic number but you can see that the number of protons is 19 so you can easily figure that out that this missing term is going to be 19 yes so if you've understood how to read this table give me a quick thumbs up let's see if you've got this or not by the way which element is present in all of us which element is common to all of us is there a, is this some element jo sare living organisms mein hai? Okay, I can see loads of thumbs up. That means you've understood the table. Now, tell me this answer. Akshay, Shiva, Shlok, Ruhi, everybody sing carbon. Yes, Ritwik. Yes, Pranavi, you're right. It is indeed carbon. Now, when we talk about carbon, there are two different types of carbon that's present in us. Did you know about this? We've got carbon 12 and we've got carbon 14 as well. Now, there is a difference between these two carbon atoms. Let's see what's the difference. Now... When we talk about these atoms, they have the same atomic number. That means number of protons is the same in both the cases. But clearly their mass number is different. And what do we call such atoms? We call them as isotopes. So they've got similar chemical properties but different physical properties. Why different physical properties? Because obviously the mass is different, right? And why similar chemical properties? Look at the configuration. It's going to be same, isn't it? Number of protons are same, number of electrons are same, so electronic configuration is going to be same. Isotopes, very important term. Atoms of the same element, this is also important that they are atoms of the same element, having same atomic number but different mass number. Let's look at some other examples also. We've got three isotopes of hydrogen over here, protium, deuterium and tritium. Now this, there are plenty of protium. Okay, abundance is very good. 
deuterium. Okay, you've heard about water, right? Have you heard of heavy water? Yes? So, if you want to know about deuterium, read about heavy water. In fact, deuterium and tritium, they are being used in nuclear reactions also. What is common? Common is the atomic number, that is 1. And what is not so common? Well, the mass number is not common. The mass number is 1, 2, 3. That means the number of neutrons are varying in this. Yes, you need to learn for first 20 elements. Okay, we've got chlorine also as another example. Again, atomic number 17 in both the cases. Mass number 35 and 37. Can you calculate the number of neutrons in this case and in this case quickly? If you know it, post it over here in the comment section. Meanwhile, we can look at the uses of isotopes. Now, isotope of uranium, that's uranium-235, is being used as a fuel in nuclear reactors for generating electricity. Okay, I've got the answer. 18 neutrons in the first one, 20 neutrons in the second one. Awesome! Perfect, guys. Your preparation is on point. Coming back to uses. Now, isotope of cobalt, that's cobalt 60, is basically used in the treatment of cancer. Then, isotope of iodine, that's 131, is used in the treatment of goiter, as you know, uh, iod iodized common salt. Now, these are the important uses of isotopes which you should know, okay? Yes, different isotopes have different uses, that's the main point over here. Now, looking at this chlorine atom that we have over here, one has a mass of 35, one has a mass of 37. What should we take as the mass of chlorine then? Should we take it to be 35? Should we take it to be 37? Should we take the average as 36? Or there is some other way of calculating the average? Let's see who's going to answer this one. Okay, it's not 35 you're saying. Correct. It's not 37. Correct. Average. Okay, I'll go with your answer then. So when we talk about these two isotopes, we are going to take average. But the average is not going to be 36. Because the percentage abundance also matters. That means, kis ratio mein dono atoms present hai? That is also very important. So suppose you've got four chlorine atoms over here. Just may say three jo hai, they are having the mass 35. And the fourth one is having the mass 37. Obviously, Average 36 nahi aayega, right? That's why we've got a formula for average atomic mass, which is M1, P1 plus M2, P2, till the number of isotopes that we have, divided by 100. So, what is M1? It's the mass, atomic mass of isotope 1. Similarly, M2 is the atomic mass of isotope 2. And so on, right? P1 is the percentage abundance of isotope 1, P2 is going to be percentage abundance of isotope 2 and so on. So let's calculate in case of chlorine. Quickly, for chlorine you just need M1, P1 plus M2, P2 divided by 100. Let's see who's going to get this one right. Percentage abundance is being given to you as 75% and 25%. These are the atomic masses. Ritwik, Lakshmi, Shikhar, all of you have got this one right. So, M1 is 35, M2 is 37, P1 is 75, P2 is 25. All you need to do is apply bot mass and you'll be able to calculate this. Yes? Alright, so the correct answer is indeed 35.5. Well done. You people have got this one right. Okay, look at these two atoms over here. You've got X, you've got Y. Now, there's something common between them and this mass number is same but here atomic number is different which means they are actually atoms of different elements yes Fida ne pehle hi answer lik diya iso bars awesome Fida alright yes she is absolutely right so atoms of different elements with different atomic number as you can see over here atomic number is different but same mass number are known as isobars. So we know what isotopes are and now we know what isobars are. So we've got calcium and argon and they, this is an example of a pair of isobar. Alright, so we've 
learned about electronic configuration in this class which is the distribution of electrons in various shells for example in case of lithium we put three electrons as two comma one then we've understood valency right we know the number of valence we know the number of electrons in the outermost shell is the valence electrons based on that you can calculate the valency so if the valence electrons are less than four valency is going to be number of valence electron if it is equal to four valency will also be four and in case it is more than four then valency will be eight minus the number of valence electrons we've covered the atomic number which is the number of protons and z letter is used to denote atomic number then mass number was the number of nucleons that is protons plus neutrons denoted by letter a then isotopes are the atoms of same element they've got the same atomic number but what is different mass number is different isobar bilkul ulta in case of isobar there are atoms of different element mass number is going to be same but atomic number is going to be different yes now i know you people are being waiting for this so we are going to have a menti quiz chalo i know you, you people are all pepped up charged up for this menti quiz so without any further delay let's log log on to this www.menti.com jaldi se aa jao www.menti.com over there they are going to ask you for a code what's this code this code is 4134 1196 quickly i can see some kids are here yes okay some questions are going to be maybe difficult there you know you have to use your knowledge but some questions are going to be very easy in those questions speed is going to be the dominating factor all right many of you joined i am burger okay who's burger shiva is burger Neva is a lion. Yes, I can see all of you are here. Great, great, great. I just wait maybe for a minute or so, and then we'll begin. So you people be ready with a pen, a paper, and a lot of competitive spirit, okay? Because we are going to have amazing Mendy quiz together. All right, more people are joining. If we are good to go, give me a thumbs up over here. Jaldi se ek thumbs up de do. I'll understand that everybody is here. In case you're not here, you can let me know. All right. I can see loads of thumbs up. बहुत सारे thumbs up दे दे. That means we are here. Okay, first question. is on your screen now let's see what the first question is what is the valency of an element which has an electronic configuration of 2,8, 3 they've given you the electronic configuration over here okay and you guys have to speed up to answer this one because i as i told you for easy questions the dominating factor is going to be the speed all right one unanimous answer is there bahut hi badhiya chat box to same answer aa raha hai sabka all right times up let's see most of you got this one right awesome yes let's see what the correct answer is so electronic configuration 2 8 3 so number of valence electrons are 3 which is less than 4 right so if it's less than 4 valency is going to be equal to the number of valence electrons so valency in this case was 3 chat is flooding with correct answers you people are awesome all right chalo let's move on to the next one and the next question is right in front of you which of the following elements is going to have a valency of 0 boron neon carbon or oxygen valency 0 which means combining capacity is 
जीरो नील कंबाइनिंग कैपेसिटी ओके कौन सा स्टेबल लग रहा है यार इनमें से थिंक अबाउट इट यू यू लेफ्ट विथ जस्ट टेन सेकेंड एवरी वन एज वोटेड फॉर द करेक्ट आंसर ओके मोस्ट ऑफ यू वोट फॉर द करेक्ट आंसर ऑसम गाइस यस बिल्कुल सही जवाब एंड चैट बॉक्स में भी आप लोगों ने मोस्ट ऑफ यू आंसर इट करेक्टली सो बोरॉन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन टू कॉमा थ्री सो वैलेंसी इज गोइंग टू बी थ्री नी ऑन विच इज अबल गैस हैज वैलेंसी जीरो वाई बिकॉज इट ऑलरेडी हैज एट इलेक्ट्रॉन इन द आउटर मोस्ट शेल कार्बन हैज फोर वैलेंसी ऑक्सीजन हैज टू ऑसम गाइस यू पीपल हैव आंसर दिस वन करेक्टली Now let's attack the next question quickly. Question number three, right in front of you. Let's see what the question is. Identify the correct electronic configuration of aluminium. Okay, and they've also given you the number of electrons in aluminium, which is thirteen. So, ये वाला question तो lightning speed से answer कर दो, because they've already given you the number of electrons as well, isn't it? Yes, they have. then of course we will see what is the idea behind this question we'll come to that as well but first of all answer this one as fast as possible awesome guys most of you landed on the correct answer which is option b so number of electrons 13 would mean electronic configuration is 2,8,3 8,3 all right Now, let's continue with the next question. But before that, let's look at the leaderboard. You people keep wanting to look at the leaderboard in between, right? We see Shri Samyukta is at the top. Shreyam, Kashiv, Mohammad Anzar, Bishal, Sai, the boss, Ashima, Ruby, Akshay, Aviral. You all are there. Well done. And I can also see that the margin is not. Too much, right? It's very nearby. Awesome. बहुत जल्दी catch up हो सकता है margin. It all depends how you are going to answer the next question. And the next question is right in front of you. What is the atomic number of an element with six electrons and eight neutrons? Atomic number of an element with six electrons and eight neutrons. एक फंडामेंटल आइडिया जो आपको इसमें अप्लाई करना है वो कर दिया तो यू विल नो द आंसर फ्रैक्शन ऑफ सेकंड्स में यस आई कैन सी अ मिक्स ऑफ आंसर्स इन द चैट बॉक्स व्हाई मिक्स ऑफ आंसर्स आर कमिंग यू आर जस्ट लिव विद सिक्स सेकंड्स फाइव सेकंड्स वी आर रनिंग आउट ऑफ टाइम क्विकली गाइस वोट ओके या आई वॉज गेटिंग अ मिक्स ऑफ आंसर्स सो do most of you got this one right let's understand let's look at the solution and see where we made a mistake atomic number is nothing but the number of protons right number of electrons will be equal to number of protons isn't it we talking about neutral atom over here so if electrons are 6 protons are also going to be 6 and protons will give us the atomic number all right moving on to the next question this is question number 5 and question is on your screen now isotopes have different atomic number but same mass number same atomic number but different mass number same atomic number and mass number all right think about it what's going to be the correct answer for this one chat box to bahut interesting hai okay everyone in the chat is going with the same option that means most of you are going to land on the correct answer yes is that the case well we'll get to know yes indeed that's the case so most of you got this one right let's look at the solution when we talk about isotopes just like you can see the case of carbon over here atoms of the same element having the same atomic number 6 in this case but different mass number 12 and 14 in this case right So you've understood what isotopes are. Moving on to the next question, and this is the final question. So all the very best. Let's see what the question is. You people have so much potential, I must say. 
Okay, if an if an element has seven protons, seven electrons, and ten neutrons, then calculate the mass number of the element. Don't give me mix of answers for this one, right? I am I am really hoping for a unanimous answer. Single unanimous answer. Let's see who's going to get this one. Because you know, you people are really well prepared. I can see that. Okay, let's see, let's see. Okay, you can smile now. Most of you got this one, right? You can take a sigh of relief because you have marked the correct answer. All right. So, mass number is starting with the number of neutrons plus number of protons. So, 10 plus 7, that is 17. All right. Chalo. Let's look at the leaderboard now. Let's see. Who is our clear winner? Has it changed or is it the same? Shriyam, well done. Really impressive performance, Shriyam. Ashima, Sai the boss, Aviral, Tanvi, Zena, Vritvik, Shakti, Pratiksha, Eshik. Well done. Awesome, guys. Yes, you have prepared this chapter really well. If you're not there, don't worry. I know you've marked the correct answer. Work on the speed, okay? Try getting these answers quickly. And we'll keep coming back with awesome sessions, sessions for you people. We've got you covered. There's nothing to worry about. Now, the next session that we have is going to be really important, guys. Practice session on whole syllabus for Term 2. That is going to be on 16th February. Next Wednesday, it's going to happen at 5 p.m. Really, really important session. I think it's the most important session. Also, there's a reminder that there's a free trial class link being given to you in the description box. You can go ahead and check this out too. And of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe uh, to our channel. I had a great time with you people. I hope you've enjoyed the session too. I'll meet you really soon again. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.